The condition block found in the condition section on the left side of our builder menu plays a crucial role in defining complex conditions, determining whether a particular condition is met, and enabling specific actions based on those conditions. Let's take a closer look at how this block functions. Once inside, we immediately notice two main sections on the right and left, dedicated to setting up conditions. In the center, we find the operator that links the two conditions. This operator offers various functions such as more than, less than, more or equal, less or equal, cross above, cross below, equal, and not equal, allowing for comparison between the first and second conditions. But what conditions are available? Let's explore the options offered, indicators, candles, market properties, account, objects, and value. Each category of conditions opens the door to a series of possible actions. For instance, under indicators, we find a wide range of tools ranging from trends to oscillators, volatility to volume, including 70 default indicators from CTrader. Let's take RSI as an example. Selecting it brings up another screen where we can customize options such as the period of RSI to suit our trading preferences. Additionally, we can apply filters like time frame, symbol, and candle ID, which will influence the evaluation of the RSI condition. For example, if we input M1 for time frame, even if we're conducting a backtest on H1, the RSI value considered will be from M1. It's worth noting that in the future, with Algo Builder X updates, we'll have the flexibility to choose not only standard timeframes but also more advanced options like Tick, Renko, Range, and Haken Ashi. To provide further clarity, let's consider wanting to use a customized condition. Let's set condition 2 inches to the numerical value of 70. So, we choose value and input 70 in the box. This indicates that we want the RSI value to be greater than 70 to fulfill our condition and trigger the block. Let's continue exploring our condition block, this time focusing on the candle section. Here, we can select the point of the candle, open, close, high, low, and median, and which candle to choose based on its ID. But first, it's crucial to understand the ID and the position of the candle on the chart to fully utilize the condition block and create effective trading strategies. Each candle on the chart is identified by a unique numerical ID, indicating its temporal position relative to the current candle. For example, candle ID 0 represents the current candle, the one forming in real time on the chart. Candle ID 1 is the immediately preceding candle, and candle ID 2 refers to the one before that. This pattern continues with candle IDs 3, 4, 5, and so on. So, when defining conditions within the condition block that refer to candles, such as candle low or candle close, we can specify which candle we want to consider using the corresponding ID. Let's move on with an example to illustrate another function of our condition block, objects. This function features a text box for parameters, where we can input the name of the drawing created with the draw object block. This block will be explored in the upcoming videos, but for now, we understand that if we've created a resistance or support with the draw object block and given it a name, parameterized it, we can input it here. To complete our example, Let's suppose we input candle low as the parameter and less than as the operator. This indicates that when the minimum value of the current candle is below the support line, it will trigger the block. Let's continue exploring the market property section. This setting allows us to access crucial values such as ask, bid, mid, highest price, and lowest price. These values are fundamental as they pertain to the current price in the market. However, there's more. In the highest price and lowest price sections, we can define a range of candles for our analysis. For instance, by setting the start candle ID to 0 and the end candle ID to 10, we obtain the highest price of the last 10 candles. This flexibility enables us to tailor our strategies to both current and past market conditions. Additionally, we can choose the target value based on the candle ID, price value, or time value. 
This option provides us with further opportunities for customization and precision in our analysis and trading decisions. Moving on to the account section, this area allows us to directly interact with our trading account's data. Here, we can monitor crucial parameters such as balance, equity, profit, free margin, and margin in use. These data provide a comprehensive overview of our account's financial health and help us make informed decisions regarding position sizes and strategies to adopt. Furthermore, we can use this information to effectively manage risk, ensuring that we maintain an appropriate balance margin ratio and thus avoid margin call situations. Lastly, the account section offers us the possibility to execute trades directly from our code allowing us to automate our portfolio and risk management strategies. Now let's explore some practical examples together. In the first example, we've connected the check no trade block to the condition block, where we require the RSI to be greater than 70. If the condition is met, we open a sell position. In this case, we want the RSI indicator to refer to the H4 timeframe. Moving on to the second example, if we have no trades open, within the condition block, we require that the closing of candle ID1 crosses above the simple moving average, SMA. It's important to note that we've also assigned candle ID1 in the SMA filters to keep candles and indicators synchronized. In the third example, we've connected the condition block to the false of the check trade count block, meaning we're activating the block only if there are open trades. Inside the condition block, We've used the account section and selected the free margin option. If there are open trades and this value is less than a thousand, the C bot will need to close all open trades. Finally, in the fourth example, we've used the market properties setting, utilizing the highest price. Here, we instruct our algorithm that to open a buy position, the highest price of the last 10 candles must be greater than the highest price of candles from ID 11 to ID 20. Additionally, we've set the target value using the price value setting. In this video, we'll also explore the formula block, which shares the same concept as the condition block. However, unlike the condition block, the formula block allows us to perform mathematical or arithmetic operations within the strategy. This block enables us to combine various numerical values or indicators through operations. Upon delving into the details of the block, we'll notice that the configuration is similar to that of the condition block, with the main difference being that instead of defining a condition, we can now define a mathematical operation. The available operators are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Therefore, we can request our conditions to be based not only on greater or lesser comparisons but also on mathematical operations. The main difference between the two blocks is that the formula block yields a variable result, which we find in the bottom right corner of the block. It's important to remember that all variables created within the strategies must be reset using the modify variable block, but we'll address this aspect in detail during the dedicated video tutorial on the block. Exploring the formula block will allow us to expand our analytical capabilities and implement more complex and customized strategies. Here are some practical examples on using the formula block. The first, very simple, is to use the formula block to calculate a profit target and to be able to close the trade. In this case, the target is 50. With 50, we mean the profit in gross profit, which is the currency we are using in our trading account. The formula we have created is account, balance, plus, 50, and the result, our variable is, daily target. Finally, we connected our closed trade block. Note, in this example and in the second one, we do not use the modify variable block, but it is indispensable every time a variable is created. In the second example, we use the formula block to calculate the difference in pips between two simple moving averages with different periods. The first SMA is used with a 70 period while the second with a 14 period. By subtracting the two values, we have as a result our variable, which we called SMA difference. This variable will then be used in the condition block. In fact, if we open the condition block, we see our variable set in the values option with more than 40 pips. 
So if through our calculation inside the formula block, the result is greater than 40 pips, the condition block will be activated, and we will open the buy position. The last example, and also the most complete one regarding the use of the formula block, is the third one. In this example, we will see how to modify the stop loss of a position at the low of a candle with a 20 pip slippage. However, before reaching the formula block, we have set the check trade count block on no trade and the candle pattern block on a bullish candle, and below we see the buy action block. So if we do not have open trades and we have a bullish candle, we open a buy trade. The formula block has been set on candle low on the left subtract as operator, and 20 pips as value on the right. The result will be our stop loss. This result will then be used in the modify trade block in the custom condition section, thus moving the stop loss to minus 20 pips from the low of the candle with ID 1. It is important to see that from the false bullet of the check trade count block, we have connected the modify variable block and the result of our formula block is set and the new variable is set to zero, so as to reset the result of our calculation to zero. It is important to remember this step because if we do not reset our variable, the result will be added to the previous one. In our case, we would have had in the first position a stop loss of 20 pips from the low of the candle, but in the second trade, it would have been 40 pips from the low of the candle, in the third trade, 60 pips, etc. In conclusion, both the condition block and the formula block are essential tools for creating automated trading strategies on platforms like CTrader. The condition block allows for the setting of complex conditions based on technical indicators and market data, while the formula block enables mathematical operations on strategy data. Both are crucial for making informed and adaptable trading decisions based on market conditions. By integrating these blocks, it's possible to build flexible and customized strategies that can provide a competitive edge in algorithmic trading.